Hey everyone, welcome back to Custom Carving, the home of all things power carving. Now, before we get on with this video, I've just got a bit of an announcement to make. We've reached a thousand subscribers, so thank you everybody who's been sharing the content. I hope that means that you guys are actually enjoying it. Um, this video is gonna be uh, a bit of an unboxing video um, with regards to another Dremel attachment. Those of you that watch the channel know that I'm always using my Dremel and trying to find new ways to use it. So um, we're gonna do a quick video. It's Dremel part 335. It's the plunge router. Now I have got a Dremel, but I think uh, one of the things I want to look at is doing some epoxy inlay in wood, which I haven't done before. Um, and for that, it'd be quite useful if I can get everything to an accurate depth using something like a router. Now, my big router is obviously far too big to be able to do that job. Um, so hopefully this Dremel tool will work and it will give us the precision that we need in order to get the job done. And if you haven't already, make sure you watch the last video because we finally finished the elephant and I think it came out pretty well. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you've got any ideas of what content you want next, what you want us to carve next, by all means, put it in the comments. We'll try and respond to every comment that we get. Um, but for now, let's go straight into it. Let's set this up and see what happens. Also, I thought it'd be quite funny as well if we uh, tried this particular logo um, as the inlay. Yeah, I'm gonna do it as sort of a three-part process with the different colors. Hopefully you recognize it. It's somebody that's quite popular on YouTube. And once it's done, if he uh, subscribes to the channel and puts in comments that he'd like it, I'd be more than happy to send it to him. So let's get straight into it. So before you unbox anything really important, make sure you've got your coffee. Um, keep caffeinated. So this is the box what it comes in, Ashman 335. There is the other um, cheaper version of a router, but from the reviews that I've seen, you don't get much visibility. So if I'm gonna be using this for um, doing sort of uh, inlays in wood, um, I'm gonna want that visibility and hopefully I'll get that with this. So um, before I go through it, guys, just to let you know, um, unboxing videos, as far as I'm concerned, I don't prep them, so you see everything as I do it. Um, and hopefully that way um, you get an honest review of the products. Uh, the channel's not sponsored by Dremel, it's not sponsored by Cutsall either, but I use those pretty much in every project that I, I do. Is um, I've got a Dremel 4000 and a Dremel 3000, um, just because I managed to get a good deal on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Came with a flex shaft and I managed to get it with the 3000. Um, for the uh, same price as what a new flex shaft would cost me. Um, so this is what comes in the box. That's your lot. So there's the actual plunge router. Um, and actually to say it's um, mainly made out of plastic, it feels pretty sturdy. Um, there's a huge instruction manual. Um, I didn't expect to get a 118 page uh, instruction manual uh, with the inlay router, but there we go. I will uh, have a read through that at some point, I'm sure. In the bag, we get the following attachments. Ah, interesting actually, because um, one of the reviews that I saw on this said that you actually get cutting blade with the uh, plunge router attachment, and it appears you don't, but luckily um, I've already got some of those, so it shouldn't be an issue. These are obviously to make straight cuts. Um, you would simply put those through there, clamp them to a piece of wood or, or whatever it is you have with a straight edge, and it should allow you to then attach the router like so through those slots and get a perfectly straight route um, if that's what you want to use it for. Um, as I say, I'm going to be mainly using it for inlay. So for me, um, the main thing I'm going to be doing is um, small inlays, intricate designs hopefully as we progress uh, into wood um, so that I can hopefully fill them with epoxy, which is something that I've not worked with yet. but. Uh, it's something I'm quite excited to try, and I've just got my first batch of epoxy in, so I'm gonna have a look at that in a future project for you guys. But all in all, it looks 
quite sturdy, which is good. Um, I've read that the maximum plunge depth on these, I believe, is 0.75 inches. Um, you don't want to take all of that out at once, though. Um, with any wood, uh, the maximum really you want to go down, I would say, is probably an eighth of an inch um, with each plunge, because otherwise um, you just overwork the bits, they'll get dull, and you've got a risk of potentially breaking your machine. So by the looks of it, the Dremel simply unscrews, goes in the top, and then you've got this plunge up and down system, which you just tighten with that, and it keeps it at that sat depth, which seems to lock in pretty well. Um, and then on the back here, you've also got this separate piece, which I would imagine is to control the depth of your plunge. So what I mean by that, is let's say you want to plunge down half a, half an inch um, or something like that, then you're, as I said, you're not going to want to do it all in one go. So by doing this, you can set the stop on the back, which will only let you plunge to a certain depth, tighten it up, and let's say that's half of the depth that you want. You would go around all of the piece. Then what you could do is for the next one, turn this anti-clockwise and carry on to get the next bit of the depth. Again, just adjust this again. And then it would go down that further um, eighth of an inch or whatever it is you're taking out. But initial impressions, pretty good. It looks quite sturdy and I was a bit worried with most of it being made out of plastic as to uh, how long it would last. Um, for the price because they are quite cheap. I'll put a link in the description um, But so far it looks pretty good. So we're gonna go uh, into the workshop try it out um, And see where we get with it So here we are back in the workshop. This is the first mistake I made I uh, chose oak which is probably one of the hardest woods uh, there is to route, um, but um, I probably should have chosen some softwood first of all. So I've just cut out the design, should have put on just about, and I'm just going to put it on with some wood glue uh, whilst I set up the Dremel. So I'll be using my Dremel 4000. Um, this can't be used with the flex shaft, unfortunately. So you're going to have to remove it. Um, it would be interesting to see if Dremel could actually come out with a router that can be used with the flex shaft because that, that would be amazing. And I think it would be um, a little bit more versatile than this tool. So looking at it, your Dremel should just screw into the top. There's um, a little bit where you twist it round. Um, I've read somewhere that it's a lot easier to actually put your cutting bit in beforehand because it can, can be uh, quite fiddly um, if you want to uh, put it together first and then put the cutting bit in. So top tip, put in the cutting bit first. I'm going to be using the 562. Uh, I'll put a link in the description as well. Um, I've also recently purchased a pack of router burrs for the Dremel, which I'll do a review on at a later point. So at this point, I realized I made my second mistake as well, because I didn't actually tighten the um, Dremel into place, which you should do with the big spanner that is actually supplied. This is where it might be a good idea to read the instruction manual. So just having a bit of a play around with it to get used to it before I actually uh, go into the wood. 
set my speed to between 25 to 30,000, which is what I normally use with wood. And I'm going to speed this process up for you guys as well, so you haven't got to watch 40 minutes of me routing, which I think would be pretty boring. But initial thoughts, um, it seems to cut through the wood. It's giving me reasonable control. And as you can see, it's making a good cut. What I did decide to do is clamp the uh, piece to my workbench um, to stop it moving around whilst I'm trying to route. You watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos where they seem to just fly around these pieces with a router. It's not quite as easy as it looks. Um, I think it's going to take a bit of practice to get used to. And don't forget, Mr. Beast, if you are watching this video, all you need to do is like, subscribe, and put something in the comments, and I'll make sure you get the finished piece, which I'm pretty confident will look better than this one does at the end of it. But again, to say that I didn't actually tighten it up, which I should have done, it's actually giving pretty good accuracy along the lines. And it's actually quite easy to control uh, along those lines. Don't get me wrong, the wood does sometimes, the, well, the cutting bit tries to run away with you. And it's just a case of taking your time, keeping it steady um, and tracing those lines. My advice to you if you're doing this for the first time as well is don't do what I did and pick a softer wood for your first attempt. At this point, re-tightening the Dremel in because I uh, didn't realise that I hadn't screwed the uh, bottom nut. If you're new to the channel as well, make sure you put something in the comments. We would love to know what you guys think. And also, if there's anything in particular you want to see us do as a project, uh, we'll try and make it happen. But put it in the comments, like and subscribe, and uh, that way we'll know what you want us to do. The only bit I did find I was having a bit of difficulty with here as well was the fact that obviously the big plastic guard on the bottom versus the piece of the size of the piece of the wood that I put um, and the clamp. It was a bit tricky to actually get into uh, the tight spaces. And if you see those screws shaking on the top as well, it's again because I didn't tighten anything before I started. Lesson learned. Read the instruction manual. That's what it's there for.
content forever turn your dreams into art we can make it right power carving passion up all night At this point, I realized that I would need a, uh, a finer bit to be able to do the smaller lines um, because the uh, Dremel 562 is uh, quite wide if you're going to be trying to put some fine details in. It did well for the uh, thicker lines, but I think for the thinner lines, um, I just put in a general standard um, round cutting there in here. Um, I've since bought some um, pack of router bits with some smaller pieces in, which I think will work even better. I think that is the majority of the lines um, routed out. Now I'm just going to use the sandpaper to take off the original template. And there you go for a first attempt i hope you'll agree it's not too bad um but i will repeat i think it's just going to take a bit more practice to get used to the tool if you've liked the video or learned anything please like and subscribe and i put the amazon links in the description for you thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day